AMD just dropped a new 9070 GRE graphics card, but is it actually new or just a reheated plate of leftovers? Also, Nvidia's Blackwell 6000 Pro got revealed and it's packing an insane 96 gigs of VRAM. Super Series rumors are heating up somehow. Could we really get an RTX 5080 Super this early? And Asus just made your GPU self snitch if it starts sagging. You know the drill, let's get into it. Same 12 gigabytes of memory, slightly better frames, but is that tiny little bump really worth a brand new launch? Let's dig into it. This is the RX 9070 GRE, and the pre-orders have gone live over in China, May 8th, 575 MSRP, and reportedly 6% faster than the 7900 GRE. Now this is gonna be region locked to China for now, this card. I would imagine it will roll out everywhere. We've talked about this before, as happened with the 7900 GRE. So it's only a matter of time, in my opinion. Uh, like Bethesda's Oblivion Remastered, it looks like we're getting another shadow drop this month. This time it's from AMD. This is the 9070 GRE. It's going to be rolling out in China first, May 8th. And the page for the product has gone live on AMD's website. Let's check it out. What's all that say? Thank goodness for Brave Browser's translation tool. Yeah, there we go. Hey, look at that. Uh, we kind of took a look at it before. We had a, a leaked image. Uh, this appears to be the correct uh, version of the card. Page is officially live on AMD's website right freaking now, so you can go check that out. Uh, some interesting things about this card. You're gonna have less compute units than the 7900 GRE, which you know kind of makes sense. The 7900 GRE was built from uh, a bigger flagship chip. And then the 9070 GRE is obviously going to be using the newer RDNA 4 architecture. It's more efficient, it's cooler, quieter, less power hungry, all that good stuff. Um, I would still say that the 7900 GRE is probably your better choice for 1440p 4K gaming, although they're trying to make the point on AMD's site here uh, that 1440p is just, just beautiful for this new 9070 GRE, but there is an obvious difference in the cards themselves. So let's take a look at the specs of the 9070 GRE and just break it down really quick. Uh, first of all, you've got 48 compute units on this bad boy, 12 gigabytes of 18 gigabytes per second GDDR memory, GDDR6 over 192 bit bus. And here you can kind of see how it compares to the rest of the lineup, the RX 9070, the 9070 XT, and then going back to the 7900 GRE from the previous generation. Uh, the slower GDDR6 modules and narrower 192-bit bus interface chop the memory bandwidth by 32.5% compared to the rest of the lineup. Depending on how RDNA 4 scales with bandwidth, this might slightly impact performance. As seen before, there's a decent chance you can extract some gains by overclocking the memory, but let's wait for official tests. Been a lot of, uh, a lot of people enjoying overclocking their 9070s and their 9070 XTs, so I'm, I'm sure the same will hold true for the GRE card as well. Uh, so what's the deal with this card? How does it slot in? Where does it fit? Well, it's possible that either the GRE is replacing the standard RX 9070 in China or local prices for the GRE will drop gradually. Only time will tell, but we're currently awaiting reviews from Chinese enthusiasts and hoping a handful of these cards slip onto US shore. Leave a comment below. Let me know what you think of this uh, GRE card if you're interested in it. Guys, we've heard the rumors of the RTX 6000 Pro and yes, it has now been confirmed. Nvidia is here to flex on their competitors with this brand new enterprise graphics card. Let's check it out. First of all, going with the RTX Pro instead of the RTX is probably uh, pretty helpful. The little name change there. They changed the name of the series. Second, they started using higher capacity modules, enabling desktop GPUs use get this to utilize 96 gigabytes for the first time now the way that this works is like a little ram sandwich it's two giant slabs of ram sandwiched onto both sides of the card so that you can achieve this 96 gigs of gddr7 memory absolutely wild the rtx pro 6000 blackwell is the flagship model in the series it will feature not one but three configurations these are designed for multi-gpu workstation pcs as well as single gpu desktop pcs while this is unclear if the same pcb will be used by all three variants it is confirmed that even with 96 gigs capacity the card will operate with only 300 watt tdp the pcb design seemingly for the max q version was recently shared on chip health let's take a look at this what a beefer Holy crap. This board does not have any components yet, but it's clear that the memory will be placed on both sides of the PCB. That's your RAM sandwich, baby. 
Each module will carry three gigabytes of capacity, enabling 16 by two by three, uh, equaling that 96 gig capacity in total. Of course, nothing prevents NVIDIA from using the same card board for other modules, such as the RTX Pro 5000, featuring the 48 gig capacity. It would only require single-sided memory layout for that card. Meanwhile, the RTX Pro 4500, powered by the GB203, would need a new board. So we can take a look at some of the, uh, the details, CUDA cores, memory, and TDP on this, as mentioned. Some interesting stuff about this. This is, uh, so you got the three card configuration um, and uh, running at a 300 watt TDP, even with the 96 gig VRAM version of this card, which is absolutely nuts. Let's talk about the PCB. It's lacking a standard uh, 12 volt six by two connector. Instead, they're gonna do four wiring points for an extension cable, uh, which means that the board is probably targeting a uh, server or max Q workstation design. So very interesting. This is a beefer, beefer of a card using that new GDDR7 memory, 96 gigs. My goodness, this is an absolute unit for professionals who need top end power and have the corporate wallets to pay for it. $10,000 is, is what we're looking at for one of these things. So, and I wouldn't be surprised if it ends up being uh, a little bit more than that. But this is gonna be uh, you know, aimed mainly for your AI, 3D rendering, and uh, just crazy professional workloads. Let's take a look at the comments, see what you guys are saying. Uh, 96 gigs of GDDR7, just the PCB is a piece of art itself, considering the signal integrity required. Too bad it will most likely catch fire, <laughs> sure. So guys, for the low, low price of $10,000, you can have this 96 gigabyte card. Absolutely nuts. Let me know what you think about this in the comments down below. Okay, guys, everyone, this is not a drill. NVIDIA is finally giving us what we've been asking for. Let's check this out. NVIDIA may release the RTX 5080 and 5070 Super with boosted memory configurations, according to Leaker. Gee, who could have called this? Oh, I don't know, every single tech YouTuber out there. We're hoping to see it on the very first release of the 50 series cards, but of course, leave it to NVIDIA to wait for the super configs to add more VRAM. It's only been a few months since NVIDIA announced its RTX 50 series graphics cards, but rumors are already pointing to a potential super series refresh. According to a post on Chip Hell Forums, a hit and miss source for hardware leaks, NVIDIA might already already be working on a 5080 Super with 24 gigs of VRAM and a 5070 Super with 16 gigs of VRAM. Boy, we're already talking about Super cards. When did these re release? January was the announcement? Holy crap, absolutely insane. How about we get some supply on the uh, regular cards first? That would that'd be awesome. These new setups would allow NVIDIA uh, to, to get some more VRAM on these. These are the rumored memory configurations said to be using NVIDIA's three gigabyte GDDR7 memory modules to allow some more flexibility uh, in the VRAM instead of just the uh, traditional eight and 16 gigabyte increments. So you've got these three gigabyte chips that come into play. Uh, this helps NVIDIA with refreshes and upgraded versions like the Super Variant. And it's easier to deliver without changing much hardware or firmware. With the higher amount of VRAM, these graphics cards will potentially have the ability to handle larger textures at higher resolutions and more complex scenes with fewer performance drops. Now guys, this is very, 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 very important for this story. Before this raises expectations and we get our hearts set on any of this, uh, it's important to note that this is uh, there's no confirmation from NVIDIA on this. These are rumors, and this is just speculation. This is just you and I. We're having a good time. Prior to the launch of the 50 series, there were similar reports around NVIDIA's plan to use these three gigabyte GDDR7 memory modules. Uh, it was expected that the 5080 would arrive in a special 24 gig VRAM flavor but they ended up using those two gig chip, chips um, and ended up coming in at the 16 gigabytes that we all know and somewhat love, somewhat. I would imagine this is not something we're gonna see until, I don't know, early next year for a super refresh. Seems weird, but I don't know. If they change what the life cycle refresh looks like, maybe late this year. I, I don't see anything coming out around Computex. I would be totally shocked. But hey, I'm prepared to be wrong. Let's take a look at the comments, see what people are saying here. Adding more VRAM is certainly nice, but it's lipstick on a pig with the 50 series. Go to new node, fix the power problems, and fix the bugs in the driver. Some fair feedback there. Let me know what you guys think about this. 
is are we actually are we going to see a card with the 24 gigs on a refresh i would imagine but again it just comes down to when how sure are you that your graphics card isn't saggy well luckily it's no longer a guessing game that is if you own a 50 series astral graphics card Let's check this out. Guys, Asus has come up with a solution to all of our GPU SAG problems. And there are a lot. In fact, let's take a look at a couple here. Pretty bad. When you see GPU SAG, it's just one of those things that makes you cringe a little bit because you know how much these cards cost. It's a little upsetting, right? I mean, you look at that and it's just, ugh. What are we talking about? Well, guess what? Check this out. Asus's flagship GPU line, the Astral, which by the way, what are we talking about? What a beautiful card. Beautiful card. I digress. I got excited. The Astral recently received a brand new feature. Uh, it's called Equipment Installation Check, and it allows users to check if the graphics card is still securely attached to your motherboard. Uh, reviewers didn't get this feature because it wasn't available at launch, but it was being discussed on Reddit earlier in the month. Uh, the Astral uses a Bosch Sensor Tech BMI 323 inertial measurement unit chip which allows it to detect any changes in its position because of this the gpu tweak utility can then detect any changes to your graphics card's position helping you prevent gpu sagging this is especially important as this premium card weighs a crap ton heavier than a standard red clay brick it's almost a seven pound graphics card i mean that thing is massive now many manufacturers have started introducing reinforced pcie slots to help prevent these heavy heavy cards from damaging those nice motherboards that you end up getting but despite that it's often still not enough to support the stresses that these long gpus put on such a small area which leads to long-term mechanical strain this comes through an update to the gpu tweak utility so if you haven't yet make sure that you run that update it if you've got the astral card you want to play with it um now combined with features like power detector plus thermal map asus is positioning a lot of these astral series cards as ultra ultra premium cards and they're trying to uh make sure that the software kind of follows that route as well is it worth it to pay the premium for an astral card you let me know what you think down in the comments below a great comment here asus should implement these sensors in humans too as sagging is a common occurrence as we age there will come a time when we have human sag anti-sag detectors and i i sure hope i'm not alive for that maybe they should implement a sensor that monitors if the gpu power cable is melted maybe could you imagine guys that's gonna do it for today uh, i've got some more videos coming up so make sure that you like subscribe leave a comment down below uh what is your favorite aib card of the 50 series these astral cards oh my gosh i mean look at them they are absolutely beautiful. They've got to be probably my favorite personally. The price tag is ugh, steep, but this is probably one of my favorites. What do you guys think? Of the 50 series, what are some of your favorite cards that you've seen come out design-wise so far? I have a beautiful PNY 5080 in this PC, and it, I like it because there's no RGB on it. Um, I, I went pretty minimal on this build in terms of lights, and uh, this one fits really well in my build for my aesthetic. What do you guys think? What would your dream 50 series card be? And which one has the nicest design? Let me know down below. We'll see you next time.